Okay, thanks Bob. Yeah, you join us here today live on site at the Pepe bus build where some epic decisions have been made. There's been some uh, controversial decisions and we're going to join the owners inside and ask them what happened, how it happened, how they got this far and what it was that put the rails right off this whole project build. So, the ceiling saga, my word. <laughs> It feels like we've been busy with the insulation and the ceiling for months. Probably we have, and that is my fault. So whose bad idea was this? Hmm? Yeah, we've had a really big setback. Um, this is more than a sidestep in the cha-cha. Nothing to see here, no problem at all. <laughs> Just carry on doing what you're doing. <laughs> Told you we should have made a cabrio. Um, the inspiration behind the bus and the whole theme of it being a beach bus comes from our scuba diving days when we started dating, uh, like almost 20 years ago. Uh, we did our um, Open Water One uh, training course in Ponta de Ore in Mozambique and we stayed in this amazing shack. Uh, it was right on the beach, completely simple. I don't think there was even any hot water. But we looked at each other and said, you know what, what more in life do you need? You've got a bed to sleep in, you've got food, you've got an amazing place to be. And, you know, that just inspired us completely to live simply. Um, the more material things you have, the more of a trap becomes. So, for us, the idea behind this is to set this up as simply as possible, but in a way that makes us feel happy and, you know, takes us to that happy place. Uh, part of the reason why we have a bus instead of a shack somewhere is that, where do you buy your shack? <laughs> you know, and then you're stuck to that one spot. Whereas having our beach hut on wheels, we can take our beach hut to whichever beach we want to. So that's the idea and the inspiration behind it. But I digress. <laughs> what does this have to do with our ceiling? Well, back in South Africa, a lot of the shacks are um, done with corrugated iron. And because the height restrictions we have here, that was not a, a question. You know, some people use in their shower. Some, so we thought, well, you know, because we've done so much insulation in the bus it's unbelievable I mean if you have metal things inside your house and it's well insulated they don't condense so I thought well maybe we can have you know beautiful zinc or you know very fine galvanized steel or something as the ceiling so it's underneath all the insulation and my husband being the amazing guy that he is said okay fine let's try it so we fitted everything out we cut it all out I mean it was a you know because we had one of those hand uh, um, steel scissors snips. So every, I mean, it, it took a while. It took a while, but I was thrilled with the result because it kind of looked, you know, wavy, which made me think of being out in the ocean on the dive boats and it's early morning, and you see this, the the sea has this lovely silver uh, color over it, and it's just like gentle waves, and that's the kind of effect that we're getting on the ceiling, which is absolutely stunning. <laughs> I tried doing it with a tape measure, it just wasn't working, so this is bendy and flexible. It seems to be working, so I've marked off the other side, and it matches this side too. It seems to be working quite well. Cuts, cuts easily. It makes such a nice noise. Yeah, baby! Buongiorno! How's it going out there, guys? Salut, it's, salut. it's a fresh morning, and it's about four degrees outside, so um, we thought we'd come out and do some work, as you do. Yes. So, stage one of our uh, second attempt at the ceiling is not looking too good. Yeah. Check this out. Yeah, well, I don't think I need to explain any of that. Yeah. I was really worried about the steel itself, but the steel is fine. Um, and the problem is this uh, Tussen profile, or this uh, profile section. Um, and I think, I mean, I'm not an expert on this, but I think it's because this is in direct contact with the outside steel, uh, you know, uh, with, with the roof beams. So what we're thinking of doing is taking these off and then putting in some more insulation in the bracket and then, yeah, try and get this attached to, yeah. <laughs> we'll see, <laughs> we're making it up as we go, but yeah, 
at, at least we found this out now before we've done uh, <laughs> a lot of water to strip on Marcel's head. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we got to fix this, we can't carry on with this, um, but I, I'm very happy that this isn't moist at all. Um, it's just this, as I said, and that's, uh, yeah, over here you can see that it's in contact with the, um, with the outside. See that, that's the beam. So we need to stop that contact from happening, because that's how we get into condensation. Because you can see all the windows are, have got condensation, but here it doesn't, so cool. Yeah, and a little bit of a left turn, another cha-cha moment. Cha -cha. <laughs> uh, should have known this actually, I mean, we're doing everything we can to provide an insulation around everything, except for this piece, which was part of the original van. We thought we'd leave it in there, it might be handy to clip it into, which has worked for us, but now we're, I think we're going to remove it, I mean, this is ridiculous, you can't leave it like yeah. this, so. I'm glad we found this now and not like three months down the road after we are done. Yeah. So it's a good job doing these builds in winter. <laughs> Yay! You find out stuff like this. Rainy wind, rainy and wet, and you find out if there are leaks, you find out if there's condensation problems. So yes. I mean, we, we do have these, they're obviously not connected. So if, I'm sure it would help if we kept it. But you know, we, we're doing this, so let's just do it properly. There's your tip for the week. Do your build in winter. <laughs> All right. You can see how these things are clipped in here. Wow. Oh gosh. There's wow. The channel. That's quite clever actually. They weren't going to go anywhere. <laughs> these weren't going to go anywhere. Okay. But yeah, they're directly in touch here, so we need to put some more insulation. That's why it's called insulation. Yes. So anyway, it might have been a good idea. It's not anymore. Yes. Carry on with what you're doing. <laughs> Don't mind us. <laughs> Well, the order has been restored, put in a strip of uh, insulation in there, taped it all up. Uh, that should be good, I hope so. Now we can carry on with the ceiling, hopefully see how far we get today. And then we'll come back in the morning and see what the result is then. But yeah, I think that was, uh, uh, that might have been the problem, it's fairly obvious. But either way, it was like that for the last 30 years, so it wasn't too bad. Just this morning we saw all this and thought, no, okay, something's not quite right, man. So yeah, well, forward and backwards, man. This thing is taking on a life of its own. So we actually need to wire it up now before. Hey, check it out. That looks nice. Wow. That's wicked. Shower proof. Yay. Okay. Where is the 
the perfect height for me. <laughs> a little hole in my toolbox. Oh no really? <laughs> Result man, check it out. Yeah. Looks like we have a ceiling. <laughs> Absolutely thrilled, it's amazing. Yeah! Needs a bit of finishing. The next morning, uh, uh, luckily it was like minus four. Well, morning campers, check that out. That is the most frosty we've seen it yet. This is the big test. Yesterday we had a lot of condensation <laughs> along the top middle rail, as you may remember. So now let's see what's happening inside. Next morning we, we come inside the bus and I'm going, oh! There's no condensation, there's no condensation. Wow. Oh, yes, 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 no condensation. And it's not, I mean, it's cold, but it's not, it's not as cold as it is outside. And there's ice on the windows, this is amazing. because it was all frozen. <laughs> so Marcel kind of looks at me and says, I'm sorry Vic, but you know, <laughs> we can't have this. We're going to be having drips when it all defrosts. Let's see. That's ice. Shit. <laughs> wow. It's not condensation, it's ice. No! 
So uh, yeah, regrettedly, and uh, you know, it, it, it was a huge effort, an absolutely huge effort. But I'm really grateful that we tried it. Um, so yes, I know there would be a lot of you going, oh, "You stupid fools!" But we had to try it, you know. He who dares wins, and sometimes you lose. <laughs> Oh, my beloved steel is not the right thing, as you and my husband and everyone else knew, but I'm really grateful to my husband for letting me try it. Uh, we were very fortunate that it froze last night, and we got in this morning, and there's actually ice on the steel, so we know that this isn't the solution for us. I was really hoping it would be, because it's so thin, and you know we, we gain a lot of height, which is really essential for my dude. Um, so now we need to think of something else. Wood panelling is, is, is just too thick, um, so we're thinking of maybe beach mats. But we need to find a way of attaching it to the ceiling without it going into one of the uh, metal cross beams. Because that, that's where the condensation problem comes in. So yeah, um, Russell will have to take off some of the steel so I can show you what I mean. I hope that works because <laughs> we can't do many more side steps now. We want to get our bus finished! <laughs> So, uh, as you can see, I found a, I think this is a pretty clever system. Um, the normal blades for this weren't working. And I was just going out of my head trying to get rid of all the, the um, hairy bits from the previous flooring. So I found an old sawzall blade and I've fitted it into this. And it actually works like a charm. So it's a lot of PT, great for warming up on a really frosty morning. Um, yeah, so we'll crack on and hopefully find another good solution for our ceiling. Well, there you have it, the whole story, nuts and all, warts and all. Uh, this is uh, me reporting live from the Pepe build back to the studio.